<laughs> and we are ready for the next speaker, if you guys don't mind. Okay, are you ready? Turn your yeah. camera on if you're ready for the next speaker. And our next uh, speaker is a friend from Greece, Catherine Riley. She is uh, a blogger, comic writer, uh, TED, uh, TED speaker, and all of those things. Uh, she writes for ELT magazines. She writes scripts. She posts uh, on social media. She runs more than one blog. She's all of those things, and she's here today to share uh, some wonderful advice with us on how to avoid burnout, which is a very up-to-date issue. Catherine, the floor is, uh, is yours. Hi, thank you so much, Anna, for the wonderful welcome. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to say hello to everyone who is you know, attending. I am a, I'm a fan of Trendy English. I love this crowd. I love this audience and we're going to have a great time together. Now, before I start, I have to point out that I've done a lot of trainings in my life. This particular training has to do with all educators, not only ELT, and I hope you're going to find this very useful, especially during these really troubled times that we're going through during the pandemic, because a lot of people have suffered you know, from burnout, and most of us don't even realize it. So without further ado, allow me to share my presentation with you. Just give me a second here and okay. All right. So I hope you can see it. Can you? Yes, we can see. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. yes. All right. So uh, let's begin. Just give me a second here. Fix everything. Okay. All right, everyone. Now, when we're talking about teacher burnout, a lot of people don't even realize that they've, you know, um, actually, you know, experienced burnout. And that is something that we have to deal with, you know, immediately. First of all, we're going to delve into, you know, the causes and the prevention methods that have to be taken in order to face this, you know, um, ordeal. First of all, we have to start examining the stats. Okay, what do the researchers say? Well, are you aware of the fact that burnout is prevalent among one in four teachers? This is, you know, incredible. 25% of teachers around the world are suffering from burnout. Now, if you're wondering how long the recovery time takes, it might be a month, it might be more, maybe even a whole year. And, you know, a lot of us have suffered a, a kind of form of burnout. But I think the worst fact of all that researchers have discovered is that some never recover and switch occupation. Yes, they quit teaching. Now, if you're wondering how many teachers quit per year, this is what will blow your minds. Half a million teachers quit every year. Can you realize what we're talking about? 500,000 teachers per year quit because they've suffered from burnout. So this is a very serious issue and we're going to talk about ways of avoiding it and, you know, um, curing it to say the least. Okay, so you might be wondering, how do I know if I'm ever, you know, even suffering from teacher burnout? Well, let's examine a few symptoms. And if you think that you've been through this, it means that you are suffering from burnout. First of all, have you ever caught yourself performing badly in class, a poor performance? Hmm. Okay. Exhaustion. And I'm not only talking about mental, physical, any kind of exhaustion. Do you drag yourself when you enter a classroom? What about the feelings that you're going through? Cynicism, pessimism, withdrawal. Do you just want to hide yourself under a rock and have, you know, to avoid your students? Well, I'm sorry to say that if you're feeling these things, then you are suffering from teacher burnout. Okay, so what are the repercussions of burnout? First of all, it's the reaction to it. Now, all of us have these feelings of guilt because we all want to do our best in class. We want to impress our kids. We want to do our job correctly. So we feel guilty, you know, when we are confronted by our students, our colleagues. But I think the worst of all is how we feel, how we feel ourselves. And in most cases, yes, we panic because if we have to, you know, skip classes, if we are, you know, obliged to stay home because we can't take the heat, yes, we panic, our social image, our personal goals. 
And of course, the worst of all, the fear of being fired. Can you imagine what would happen if we don't go to work because we feel horrible, but on the other hand, we think that our, our employer will fire us? So all of these feelings of incompetence, self-degradation, it's a blow to our self-esteem. Now, I think that the worst mistake that all of us are making is that we say that we'll be strong, we'll get through this. So what do we do? We actually pray, we tell ourselves we can do this, we're strong teachers, we're experienced. Believe me, it does not have to do with experience and being strong. We are actually making things worse. So can we ignore burnout and keep on working? Absolutely not. We were going to make things much worse. Okay, so let's say that we continue working. There are even further repercussions that we have to you know, uh, consider. First of all, psychologists call this a panic reaction. We are panicking and our reaction is to keep on working, which is bad for all of us. First of all, we are inefficient in our jobs. We are not doing, you know, our jobs correctly. Delays. I have suffered from burnout myself. And I remember at some point, instead of, you know, delivering my students' homework uh, every week, I actually bumped it up to two, three weeks. I, I found myself, you know, falling behind. Mistakes. There are many forms of mistakes that, you know, we can make in class. One mistake that I made, I used to confuse my students' names, which is horrible because I really love my kids. Mental health is deteriorating. And of course, all of these consequences put together for students and colleagues, because when we start making mistakes, things will start popping up here and there. So it's not a good thing, you know, to fall into this panic reaction. Okay, let's take a huge breath because everyone is actually, you know, stressing right now. Let's take a step back, relax. How did we get here? How did this all happen? Okay, so first of all, let's think, how does burnout occur? Is it just one reason or is it a multitude of reasons? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so there are usually many reasons. First of all, it's the student's behavior. Yes, in many cases, and I'm not talking about being, you know, uh, an incompetent student. I'm talking about students that are undisciplined. And we have to put up with this because we're teachers. And, you know, there are many kids that, you know, are never, you know, paying attention to us. They're an undisciplined or disrupt, you know, the class flow. Parents' behavior. Yes, I think this is even worse than the student's behavior. And I know that most of you are going to agree with me. Allow me to share a picture with you. Okay, I'm not saying that, you know, parents should be our allies, okay? We're not trying to, you know, uh, make our students feel bad. However, let's make a comparison with what, was, what used to be going on, you know, decades ago. When a student was undisciplined or when he didn't study, parents would, you know, genuinely listen to us. And, you know, all together as a team, we would try to help the student. Today, though, I don't know, because of social media, perhaps, because of the way society has structured, because of the fact that people are more aggressive in society today than they used to be. They have a tendency to lash out to everyone they see. Parents are not our allies anymore. Okay, this is not, you know, the rule, but in most cases, they will, you know, um, support their kid, no matter how undisciplined this is. This, of course, um, exacts a lot of pressure on us. It's difficult to do our job when we're being attacked, you know, from all ends. So let's come back here. <laughs> Lack of support from senior management. Now, don't get me wrong. Our employers are doing our best to pay us, okay? It's a huge responsibility. Students are going through really, diff sorry, um, schools are going through really difficult times because, you know, it's the financial crisis and um, they are trying to do their best to have the schools running. However, in many cases, they will accept this undisciplined behavior by the students. And, you know, when we talk to the senior management, the school principal, in many cases, he'll just brush it off or say, okay, just try to do your best, keep things under control. But this is even more pressure on our shoulders. Constant observation. What do I mean by this? I know of many schools that have cameras placed inside. And of course, you know, this is to observe our progress. Yes, I'm in favor of it, but you know, not 24 hours a day. And this of course will create many problems because it's even adding to more mental stress, not only to us, but to our students as well. And of course, afterwards comes scrutiny, evaluation, 
And you know what? No one can get a five out of five stars. No one is 100%. So when they actually point out a few of our flaws, we will feel really bad about this. And we are getting there, you know, to the burnout. Okay, so this, uh, <laughs> this presentation is really, you know, stressful. So let's start talking about ways to prevent burnout and how to remedy it. You have to set boundaries. Now, I know what you're going to say. What kind of boundaries? We're working so many hours. It's a teacher's job. I mean, we have to work. I know. I agree with you. That's what I do. First of all, and before you bombard me, leave school work at school. What do I mean by this? All of us have the tendency to bring our tests home, our essays home. If you can actually dedicate only a few hours, just a few hours to correct things at school, it would be much better. Can you stay half an hour after lesson, one hour after lesson to correct some things? I'm not saying every uh, day of the week, maybe two, three times of the week. Your personal life mustn't intertwine with your profession. If you can actually leave, you know, things at school and not bring them home as much as possible, you will feel rejuvenated, okay? Because mentally, our mind will connect our house, our home, our personal lives to work. And that's a huge mistake because your families and loved ones will also be affected. I know many cases of my colleagues who have kids, um, their kids, you know, usually say, can we please play mommy? Um, and you know, we're like, no, I have to correct this homework, sweetheart. You know, this really affects our kids. Try not, you know, to intertwine things and try to set a specific time frame. Can you dedicate three hours a week to stay after school at school, you know, to correct things. And when you go home, you will actually feel better because home is the place where we have to relax and rest. It's a tranquil environment and the best remedy. We want to do our hobbies. We want to rest. We want to watch Netflix or anything we um, desire to do. Okay. Now, a second method of uh, preventing burnout is to focus on your achievements. Now, ask yourself, what have I achieved? I know this sounds corny. I would like all of you to close your eyes and think to yourselves, what have I achieved? I am a teacher. I am passing on knowledge to the next generation. My job is really hard. I should be proud of myself. Okay. So the importance of our occupation and the legacy we leave behind is of the utmost importance. Do you realize how important our job is? I think that our job is probably the most important in the world. We should be proud of what we're going through, okay? It's really hard. And yes, you might ask me, what do we gain in return? You know, sometimes our kids might hug us. Some other times they might just, you know, run away. But even if you get that little smile, that little smile from someone, you know that they appreciate it. And even if they don't show it at this young, tender age, when they become adults, they'll remember, you know, I like Miss Catherine. She taught me a few things. And, you know, I think that's the most important thing to leave a legacy. And don't forget what you have offered others. Be proud of yourselves, okay? Our job isn't easy. We are heroes, okay? Literally superheroes. Okay, now... Okay, invest in personal time. Now, do you have any hobbies like dancing or painting? What about family activities? Do you play board games? There are so many things that you can do when you're at home. Friends, please go out with your friends at least once a week. Have a coffee. Do something. One of the best things about going out with friends is to exchange information. Okay, so you let out all your frustrations. You tell them everything that went bad at work, okay? And then in, in turn, they'll do the same thing. This exchange, you know, you let out all the stress and it helps you, you know, relax and, you know, feel more at ease. Even if you don't have friends, please go out, go out for a walk at the park, anything. And one more thing, please, during the pandemic, Avoid further interactions with devices. We're using Zoom all day, electronic devices. When you go home, just leave things, you know, at the side, okay? Just don't touch your phone. You'll see that um, you'll feel much more um, at ease if you don't use technology. Now, staying healthy. I love this part. Can you exercise at least 10 minutes a day? Yes, 10 minutes a day can make a huge difference. Do you have a yoga map? anything. Just try to exercise. Okay. Now, eating healthy. This is another thing that we should focus on. I used to never bring anything with me to work, not even a sandwich, not even water, which was a huge mistake. When I started bringing just a sandwich or anything, 
the moment I ate it during break, I felt rejuvenated and more energy was going through me. And you know, eating, okay, not overeating, but eating just a little can prevent stress, okay? And stress leads to burnout. We want to avoid this. Now, I want everyone to pay attention to what I'm showing you right now. Drink water, okay? I'm using um, capital letters. Drinking water is so important. Now, I want to ask you a question. Let's say that you're looking at this picture right now. Okay, we have the lady uh, drinking water. Do you feel thirsty? If you do feel thirsty, then that means that you are dehydrated, which means that you have to drink water right now. Please go drink some water. Okay, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> All right, it's very important to drink water. And you know, something that uh, I've learned, if you drink even a few sips of water during your lesson, Okay, you can't imagine what the world of difference it will make, okay? If you're feeling stressed, if they're not listening to you, if they're going crazy, drink some water. You will be surprised how much this will help and reduce your stress. Okay, sleep. Okay, we understand this. Now, a Japanese research has um, investigated this issue and you know, pointed out that if you have a bath before going to sleep, or even a foot bath, you'll be sleeping 40 minutes extra than usual and you'll feel more relaxed. This is an actual research. And that's why, you know, the Japanese uh, have a bath before going to bed. Uh, Western cultures, we don't do this, which is a huge mistake. We have to relax before going to bed. Sleeping regularly, of course, you have to sleep regularly. Try to go to bed at the same time each night and wake up at the same time each morning. We are machines, okay? I mean, our bodies are like machines. We have to regulate it. Have some tea, preferably green tea before going to bed. Avoid social media, just get rid of that phone, okay? Don't have it in the bedroom. And of course, these tips will help against stress, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, even heart issues. Yes, it sounds incredible, it's true. And I know what you're going to say, Catherine. I mean, there's so many technical issues. I prepared the perfect lesson yesterday and I wanted to do something fantastic with my kids, but there was no internet connection or you know, something went wrong with my Zoom and all of these crazy matters. And I'm going to ask you something because I'm so happy this happened earlier because we actually maxed out here on Zoom and um, you know, you have to make compromises. You have to accept the fact that some things are beyond our control. What we have achieved, you know, right now that we are connecting through this uh, platform, you know, and um, being in contact is a miracle in itself, okay? Of course, there are going to be some issues. Nothing is perfect, all right? Accept it. Now, you might also tell me that, you know, yes, we're eating healthily, we're trying to sleep. Yes, we're following your advice, but it's too much. Well, you know, it's not a bad thing to seek help from a specialist. I mean, psychologists, I mean, that's their jobs to help us. Okay, psychological support should not be disregarded. And in no cases am I implying that we're crazy. No, we're not crazy, we're human beings, we need help. A psychologist will help you consider if your concerns are valid. Okay, am I right to be stressed? What's wrong, can you help me? And psychologists will help you set things into perspective, trust me. This will help you a lot. You know, supporting each other at a job, any kind of job, I'm not only talking about ELT, is a, a matter of debate. There are some jobs in which, you know, we get along well with our colleagues, some others we don't. But if you do have some people that you look up to that are friends at work, is it too personal to ask someone if he is not feeling well? Because, you know, if you see him dragging, not sociable, tired, exhausted, he might be suffering from burnout. You can ask him, are you all right? Just one simple question can make the world of difference to the person you're asking. And you know what? It will lift his spirits. Can I help you in any way? Of course, there are some questions which are inappropriate. For example, I remember one of my colleagues, he was away for almost a month. We didn't know at the time, but he was suffering from burnout. And I remember one of my colleagues had the audacity to ask him, where were you? Which is a horrible question to ask. We don't ask these questions. We have to respect, you know, um, what everyone is going through and not reprimand them. Now, as I just said, support him, do not pity him. All of us can go through this. If we are in a good, you know, relationship with him, help with corrections, reschedule, we're all a part of a team. Substitutions, you know, it's, it's really, 
um, useful, you know, to be a part of a team and help each other. That's the most important quality of being a part of a huge uh, team. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, because yes, I might be working in a toxic environment. I understand how difficult the job market is. However, you know, one of my colleagues once asked me, um, how much can you mentally handle? And I remember her telling me, I can handle it. And I'm like, sweetheart, you are not obliged to handle anything. You're just doing your job. You're not forced to handle something mentally. I'm not saying quit your jobs, of course not, because we have to survive, okay. However, on the side, try to do some job hunting. Do it for yourselves. Respect yourself, okay. And of course, the most important of all, if you can switch environments and go to a better one, do it, please. Okay, because we only live once. And you know what? Just remember, everyone, you don't have to prove anything to anyone but yourself. Okay, don't overdo it. Just love your jobs. Please take care of yourselves. Eat healthy, drink water, and above all, be proud. Okay, thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure speaking for you once again. All right. If anyone wants to contact me, here's my contact info. And I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you. Your sound, Anna, your sound, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Quick fix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Catherine, for your uh, inspirational presentation. And I'm sure I'm, I'm the When I say, oh, exactly. Yeah, let's give Catherine our sound, uh, our silent round of applause. Come on, remember, she just called you superheroes. She, told, she said, our job is the most important job in the world. Isn't that what every teacher would like to hear? Thank you so much. It's been so inspirational, Catherine. I see in the chat that we don't have any immediate questions, but mostly positive comments and people uh, were clapping and sending reactions all the way through a talk, uh, demonstrating how much they appreciate everything you're calling us. And I just brought some water to drink and following your advice. And I, <laughs> there you go. Maybe we can uh, cheers to water. <laughs> That's the, the beauty cheers, of Cheers, everyone. <laughs> cameras on. Thank you, Catherine, for being with us this early, early morning in Greece. We could hear uh, actually the trash being taken out <laughs> early in the morning uh, during your speech, which is amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't notice it actually. <laughs> <laughs> because you were wearing uh, headphones and we could hear it, which just another indication of how early it is uh, in Greece. And many thanks for being with us uh, today.